In this video, we'll go over the answers to questions 19 to 20 of the 2020 New South Wales HSC Chemistry Exam. The first question is 19. Question 19 states, Nitrogen dioxide reacts to form dinitrogen tetraoxide in a sealed flask according to the following equation. The reversible reaction is then listed with its delta H or change in enthalpy value given as negative 57.2 kilojoules per mole. The question then asks, which graph best represents the rates of both the forward and reverse reactions when an equilibrium system containing these gases is cooled at time t? We then see four different rate versus time graphs with forward reactions labeled with a solid line and reverse reactions with a dotted line. So in this question, we need to determine what will happen to the rate of both reactions when the system is cooled. In this case, we have two factors to take into account. Firstly, in general, when we call a vessel undergoing a reaction, the rate of the overall reaction will decrease. Secondly, reversible equilibrium systems will shift their equilibrium point whenever a change occurs to the temperature or concentration of the reactants or products, or if gases are involved, pressure as well. Looking at the plots A through D, we can see that all have a significant change at time T. However, if we look at point 1, we know that cooling a reaction vessel will decrease the overall rate of the reaction. At no point should the rate increase higher than it was before the cooling event. Therefore, based on point 1, we can eliminate options A and B, as these show a sharp rise in the reaction rate at time T, something that would not happen if the temperature decreased. Moving on to point 2, we know that for a system that has reached equilibrium, when a change to the temperature occurs, a certain reaction will be favoured, and a new equilibrium point will be established. To determine which is favoured, we use Le Chatelier's principle, which states that the system will favour the reaction, or side, that minimises the change that has occurred. In this case, the NO2 and 204 system is being cooled. Using Le Chatelier's principle, that means the reaction that increases the temperature will be favoured. To determine which reaction that is, we need to look back at the equation in the question. Looking at the delta H value, we see that it is negative, meaning that the forward reaction is exothermic. Exothermic reactions release heat, and therefore the forward reaction releases heat, which would counteract the cooling event at time t. Therefore, the forward reaction is favoured. That means, of the two options we have left, we need to choose the one that shows a preference for the forward reaction. As we have established, both forward and reverse reactions will decrease at time t, but the one that doesn't decrease as much, or in other words, has a higher rate before it reaches equilibrium, will be the option we are looking for. If we look at option D, this is exactly what we are after. At time t, the rate of the forward reaction is higher than the rate of the reverse reaction. That clear preference for the forward reaction means that option D is the answer. The last question in the multiple choice section is 20. Question 20 states, the graph shows the concentration of silver and chromate ions, which can exist in a saturated solution of silver chromate. We are then presented with a gridded graph with the concentration of the silver ions in moles per litre on the x-axis and the concentration of the chromate ions on the y-axis. The plot is drawn on top and starts from the top left part of the graph ending near the bottom right, similar to an exponential decrease or one part of a hyperbolic plot. The question is then, based on the information provided, what is the KSP for silver chromate? To save space, we will list out the options here and see that they range from 1.1 times 10 to the negative 8 to 4.4 times 10 to the negative 12. So, if we are dealing with a saturated solution of silver chromate, that means that we have a reversible reaction between the solid silver chromate and the individual ions in solution. Therefore, the first thing to do is to write out the reversible reaction, which would look something like this. We know the charges on these ions by looking at the axis labels, which show us that the silver ion has a plus one charge and the chromate ion has a negative two charge. Now, the KSP is defined as the equilibrium constant for the dissolution of a solid to a saturated solution of its ions. In other words, it will be the equilibrium constant for the equation we have above. So, we can write the KSP as the concentration of the silver ion squared multiplied by the concentration of the chromate ions. Notice that we do not have the reactant solid silver chromate in the expression. This is because it is a solid and therefore would not appear in an equilibrium constant expression like this. Only gases or aqueous solutions are present in equilibrium constant expressions. Now, to find values to plug into the expression, we use the plot. The plot on the graph represents all the possible combinations of silver and chromate ion concentrations in a saturated solution. All these pairs of points represent equilibrium concentrations of the silver and chromate ions in a saturated solution. 
Therefore, we can pick any pair of concentrations along this curve and plug those values into our KSP expression above. To make the maths easier, we can choose a concentration of silver ions such that we have a one in the value. In this case, we choose one times 10 to the negative four moles per liter. If we match this up against the curve, we see that the corresponding chromate ion concentration is just above 10 times 10 to the negative five moles per liter. We will say that it is about 11 times 10 to the negative five moles per liter, but in an exam with a question like this, you shouldn't need to be super precise as the possible options are generally far apart enough to distinguish between them as they are here in this question. You'll just choose the option closest to the answer you calculate. So as we said, now it's just a matter of plugging these values into this equation. So we square our silver ion concentration and multiply by the chromate ion concentration for which I have simplified the 11 times 10 to the negative five to 1.1 times 10 to the negative four. After squaring the silver ion concentration, this then simplifies to one times 10 to the negative eight and the chromate ion concentration is still 1.1 times 10 to the negative four. After multiplying all these together, we end up with 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. This means that option C is our answer. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.